So there's all kinds of ways to buffer signals and there's all kinds of ways to bias them or to remove biases. But what if you have limited knowledge about your signal or you just want to be able to handle any signal, AC or DC? So basically you want to buffer and bias a signal in one step. You can do it very simply with an op amp weighted summing amplifier. So if you had an AC signal and you wanted to remove the bias, then you would just slap a capacitor between the signal and whatever you're doing and the bias will be gone. And then you could bias that signal with the voltage divider on the other side, it works great. But you cannot bias a digital signal that way because the capacitor is just going to block it as if it was a bias that it's removing. And similarly, you can't use that method to bias it and block the bias because, you know, same thing. So a capacitor is out. And there are buffer chips. You can buffer the signal with a buffer chip, but you don't want to try and put a voltage divider on the end of a buffer chip. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Depends on your buffer, I suppose. But it's still not great. What about an op amp? Well, the problem with an op amp is if you try to put a voltage divider after an op amp, the op amp is just going to counteract it. It's going to do the feedback thing, and it's going to eliminate the bias. It's as if it's not even there. But what if you use the op amp to bias instead? If you have two signals, let's say your voltage in and your voltage bias. So your voltage in could be something from 0 to 5 volts, and let's say you want to remove that bias, so you would apply negative 2.5 volts as if you were running it through a capacitor, except it'll also work on a DC signal. So it would work on a square wave, for instance. If you apply those signals through resistors, join them into an op amp in standard non-inverting unity gain form, you essentially get the voltage in and the voltage bias added together. I've gone over the summing amplifier several times, so I'll skip all the details. But the formula, if we call this W1 and W2, we get V in times W1 plus V bias times W2 equals voltage out. Now, what are W1 and W2? The entire thing is 1. So W1 plus W2 equals 1. The output has normal weight, obviously. It's like, it's like if you take an average. You add six things and then you divide by six, so each of them is one-sixth of the output. The same thing here. We're, you're, we're kind of... We're not averaging, but we are averaging, essentially. So W1 and W2 are both 0.5, as far as the output voltage is concerned. In reality, they're just two resistors that are the same value. Just pick two identical resistors, because we want them to be equally weighted. We want to just add. But because of this 0.5, because we're kind of averaging, we think of it as summing, but we're kind of averaging, we need to actually apply a gain of two. Because if voltage in is 5 volts, and voltage bias is 5 volts, we would expect them to add to 10 volts, but they're each being multiplied by 0.5. So you get 2.5 plus 2.5 is 5. So it's correct, it's just half the size. So instead of unity gain, we just want to double it. We take the output, we voltage divide it with ground, and that is the inverting input. So we have 5 volts plus 5 volts equals 10 volts, but it turns out to be 2.5 plus 2.5 equals 5. So this input sees 5 volts. So you'd expect the output to put out 5 volts. But if it puts out 5 volts, it's going to be voltage divided. These are identical again. It'll be voltage divided with 0 to be 2.5. It's cutting the output in half. So this will only see 2.5. So the op amp will turn the output up more to 10. 10 will voltage divide to 5. Since we know there's always two inputs, they're always connected, and we know that we want to just counteract this weighting, there you go. So just add two resistors, and you get your actual correct answer. So you apply your signal here, you apply your bias here, and you get a biased, buffered signal. It's obviously going to be overkill for many situations, completely silly for other situations, but it's the general solution. This will work on any polarity signal that fits within the voltage range, the supply window, and also the headroom of your op amp if it's not rail to rail, because I have the crappy op amps. They're actually good op amps, but they don't go rail to rail. So this is the absolute general solution that works on any signal, AC, DC, anything. That's pretty handy to have around, I think. So let me show you. So I'm using a plus and minus 7 volt supply to counteract the headroom or to supply the headroom needed by my op amps so they can handle plus and minus 5 volts. I have two potentiometers to provide me two voltage dividers for two signals. And here are the two signals. I've got them both close to zero right now. So let me go ahead and move 
the right multimeter over to the output of the op amp. And we're getting close to zero, you know, we got noise, it's amplifying. But let's say that I'm going to set the bias first. So I've got a zero to five volt signal that I want to bring down to negative 2.5 to positive 2.5 as if I was putting it through a capacitor, except it'll work on a DC steady state signal as well. In fact, it'll work on any signal. So I'll just bring this down to negative 2.5 or so, Pretty good with the screwdriver, and we're getting about negative 2.5, again, noise. If I move the detector, the multimeter, over here, see there's the 0.7, so let me try and get that closer to zero. See, oh, no, screwdriver, please. It's, it's, it's just amplifying that. So, I've got a negative 2.5 bias. So now, let me put my signal all the way up to five volts. So the top peak is now at positive 2.5. And then zero volts, the bottom peak, is at negative 2.5. And if I go to 2.5, which was halfway up the signal, so I've applied the bias. If I wanted to change the bias, let's say I had a one volt peak to peak signal, so 0.5 volts to 0.5 volts, minus 0.5 to plus 0.5, like an audio input. And I wanted to bias it up so that it could be read by the analog pin on my Arduino. So we set the bias to positive 2.5, because the Arduino could read 0 to 5 volts. So 2.5 is right in the middle. So no matter the amplitude of the signal, whatever the amplitude is, if the incoming signal has no DC bias, then I'm biasing it up into the middle. And then as long as it's not a crazy high signal, which audio won't be, audio is going to be a small signal, then I can have my signal, which will go from negative 0.5 volts and then positive 0.5 volts. So there you go. I try to do strange things and all the videos I've been doing recently have been leading up to a particular device I'm making, or circuit I'm making rather. This is how these things usually go. I try to make a video on a particular thing and in the process of trying to make that thing, I have to learn seven other things that I do videos on. So there you go. Just a fun little trick. I'm full of them. So while I try to go make room, I'll be seeing you.